300 million years ago, a large creature dwells at the floor of its swampy habitats in the search of food. It was called Megarachne. Despite its name, it wasn't some giant aquatic spider, and it was actually from a group of more ancient creatures known as Eurypterids, better known as sea scorpions. However, these creatures were ancient and from another era, and by Megarachne's time, most of them had gone extinct. Furthermore, they were far better known as ocean-going, swimming predators. Why was this creature named Big Spider, and why was it in a freshwater habitat millions of years after its sea-dwelling relatives had gone extinct? In 1980, it was announced that the fossil of the largest spider that has ever lived had been discovered in the 300 million year old rocks in central Argentina. The beast was named Megarachne, and being over half a meter long, it would have been twice the size of the largest current giant spider record holder. The issue was that although Megarachne had some spider-like features, like what appeared to look like a spider's abdomen on the fossil that the creature was originally known from, there were other typical spider traits that the creature was missing, or traits that spiders have that Megarachne was missing. Complete articulated remains of prehistoric organisms are rare, and in the vast majority of cases, paleontologists have to piece together what ancient lineages of animals looked like with the bits and pieces that have survived, and this means that mistakes can be made. In 2005, the original fossil was re-examined, along with another newly discovered fossilized specimen, and it was found to not be a spider, and it actually belonged to a different group of ancient creatures called Eurypterids or sea scorpions. However, this doesn't mean that it was a scorpion, because although Eurypterids are closely related to scorpions and other arachnids, like spiders, they are actually a different group of animals. Eurypterids, including Megarachne, are from a group of arthropods known as the Chelicerata that contains arachnids, horseshoe crabs, and sea spiders. The Chelicerata are one of the giant groups of arthropods alongside crustaceans, trilobites, and hexapods that contain insects. And the name sea scorpion does not mean that Megarachne was a sea creature either, because unlike the majority of its Eurypterid relatives, it actually seemed to have preferred freshwater habitats, with its fossils being discovered inland. While Megarachne would have been incredibly large for a spider, it was actually fairly small compared to some of the largest Eurypterids, like Eucalopterus. So Megarachne got demoted from giant spider to a moderately sized Eurypterid. Adding to this creature's unusual qualities, it lived approximately 300 million years ago at the end of the Carboniferous period, which was incredibly late for a sea scorpion that had their heyday about 100 million years before this. And by the Carboniferous period, were much less common, and this was because it was from a less famous and less common group of Eurypterids. The more famous sea-going Eurypterids are known as Eurypterina. These creatures were often lobster-like, as they were long and streamlined, and many of them had claws. But on top of this, they had modified limbs that had adapted into paddles to propel themselves through the water. Although a lot of these creatures are known for their large sizes, like Eucalopterus, that would have stretched longer than a man standing, this group of creatures varied in size significantly, occupying a range of predatory niches, with some of them being able to fit in the palm of your hand. This type of Eurypterid are the reason why these creatures are referred to as sea scorpions, but Megarachne belong to a different lineage of these animals called the Stylonurina, and when the fish lobsters developed fish-like paddles on their hind limbs and started swimming the oceans, the Stylonurina didn't and just retained a leg-like structure. This is thought to be because they didn't swim all that much, or were incapable of swimming, and just stayed close to the floor. Like the Eurypterina, the Stylonurina had existed since the Silurian period, over 400 million years ago. However, the Eurypterina were by far the more common animal in these ancient times. But this would change during the Devonian period, when the Eurypterina started to dwindle significantly, but the Stylonurina remained largely unaffected by whatever was killing off their swimming cousins. Although it isn't entirely understood why the Eurypterina were going extinct around this time, it is possible that they were losing out to competition to the increasing number of jawed fish that were becoming more successful around this time. Fish evolved long ago and had shared the oceans with the Eurypterids for millions of years, but due to their small sizes and sucking mouthparts, they had never been much more than food for the Eurypterids. 
However, in the Devonian period, some fish underwent many changes that made them formidable foes, like the development of jaws, meaning that fish developed the equipment needed to become predators instead of prey. By the end of the Devonian period, Eurypterids were almost completely extinct in marine habitats, and the jawed fish were now the apex predators of the ocean. It can't be known if Eurypterids were outcompeted or fish merely exploited their disappearance, but this change, putting fish at the top of the food chain, had a massive impact on the Devonian seas that persists to this day. For instance, it affected squid evolution at this time as well. Eurypterids may have been almost wiped out in marine ecosystems, but the style of Eurena had many species that had migrated and adapted into freshwater habitats where they could escape the onslaught. After the extinction of the ocean-going Eurypterids, the style of Eurena persisted on for another 100 million years in freshwater ecosystems. Specifically, two families survived into the Carboniferous period, called the Hibatopterids and the Mycteroptids. These families took a departure from most other Eurypterids in appearance as the Hippotopterids started to look a lot like horseshoe crabs, and the Mycteroptids became more spider-like, and this is the family that Megarachne belonged to. These families started out not all too different to the other Eurypterids when they first migrated inland, with some of the earliest ancestors, like Drapanopterus, found in Scotland, looking a lot more Eurypterid-like. But after living in their freshwater habitats for a long time, by the Carboniferous period, they had adapted to a new lifestyle, and their bodies had changed to suit it. They were sweep feeders, where they used their smaller front limbs to sweep through the soft sediment of the riverbeds and swamps to prey on the small animals that dwelled under the dirt and sand, while making brief excursions on land to reach other hunting grounds. This lifestyle probably wasn't as glamorous as their apex predator relatives, the Eurypterina, but this new lifestyle was probably the reason behind their success because although the jawed fish took over the oceans first, by the Carboniferous, the most successful predators in freshwater habitats were also fish. So feeding at the lake bed meant they could stay out of sight and out of direct competition. And this is how Megarachne was thought to have lived as well, as it shared very similar front limbs to its more horseshoe crab-like relatives. So this creature was an incredibly different animal to the giant land dwelling spider that it was previously envisioned as. Although the surviving Eurypterids would never be as successful and common as they once were, the surviving freshwater type were by no means just clinging on, as they were fairly successful and have been found in different parts of the globe, and some of them also became giants in their new world as well, as Hibatopterus could grow up to 2 meters long, meaning it was actually one of the largest Eurypterids that has ever lived. Although they outlasted their sea-going relatives by a large margin, the Stylian Eurena would eventually go extinct as well. Megarachne went extinct at the end of the Carboniferous, about 300 million years ago, but its horseshoe crab-like relatives lasted even longer still, with Campylocephalus being the last known sea scorpion to have lived, going extinct 250 million years ago. So Megarachne may not be a giant spider, but its evolutionary history is arguably even more fascinating. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you enjoy content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.